G'day guys and welcome to this business management lesson. In today's lesson we're looking at key knowledge point 424. That is unit 4, area of study 2 and the fourth key knowledge point for this area of study. Today specifically we're looking at an overview of the principles of the learning organization, which is a theory about change management authored by Peter Senge. A name Senge. Try to get it right. <laughs> and in this key knowledge point, the need to create a positive culture for change. In the last key knowledge point, we talked about corporate culture. We talked about the idea that a positive culture is one in which people will be more engaged and motivated. They'll be more productive and efficient. They'll be more cooperative. They'll be more excited. They'll be happier. This key knowledge point has us look at a theory of change management, the learning organization, that Peter Senge used to describe a culture in which change will be the most successful. Peter Senge's idea was that a learning organization is a business in which the culture enables change to occur with almost no restraining forces. That the environment internally will be prepared for and almost excited for change at any time. Certainly, a learning organization, we can say with certainty, is a business that is going to excel in times of change. There are five key principles to any learning organization, and Peter Senge said that for a business to be considered a learning organization, they need to be demonstrating or they need to have all five principles in action. You can't be a learning organization without all five of these characteristics. The first is systems thinking, which is the ability to visualize the whole system of your business and understand what role each individual plays within that system. To be able to see the interconnectedness of the whole system. The idea that your receptionist is just as integral to the functioning of the whole business as any member of staff because they're all providing a necessary function. The idea that your suppliers contribute just as much to the success of your business as any of your maintenance crew, as any of your truck drivers, because they are all involved in contributing to the success of the overall system. And being able to look for individual areas for improvement within the system that when made will contribute to the success of the overall system. Here's an example. Your management might propose that there is too much wastage in operations and you might need to consider decreasing wastage in operations. It might be that one strategy that's proposed is to implement strict quality control operations. Well, if you're a systems thinker, if you've got a good uh, perception of the entire system, you know what's going on, uh, you're a business manager who is well versed and well informed about the nature of your operations and you know what people are doing already, then you might be able to say, without even needing to implement strict quality controls, that this will decrease wastage. However, strict quality controls based on what's already going on in operations might decrease production. If people have to stop and check their work constantly against pre-established standards, it's going to slow them down. You know that they're already working pretty much to capacity and adding any more to their workload is going to slow down production. You might also know that right now, market demand for your output is significant and any decrease in production is going to mean that there's less supply to meet demand and so you'll actually drop sales. And certainly you'll have reduced productivity as a result of that slowed production. If you're a systems thinker, you'll be able to see the impact that changes in one area of your business are going to have on another area of your business because you already see how all the parts of your business play together to, for the success of the overall system. The next principle is personal mastery. And essentially, this is why footy players continue to train because the better you are as an individual, the more you can contribute to the overall business. If each individual within an organization is focused on improving themselves constantly, then they will be on board when you propose changes to improve the business. They understand the need for continual improvement. So if you propose a change that is in the spirit of improving the business, they're more likely to be on board. If they're constantly 
pursuing personal mastery and exposing themselves to new learning challenges, um, trying to take on new responsibilities, trying to do things in a new way to pursue personal improvement, then they're prepared for change that affects them constantly and they'll be more on board with change when it's presented. Mental models is the third of the principles. Not that they come in any order, but it's the third we're talking about. Ultimately, each individual holds mental models. They are biases, they are preferences, they are attitudes. This is how we perceive the world. If you believe that you are strong and the world owes you opportunities, you're going to interact with people very differently than if you believe that you're not necessarily um, someone who's built for leadership and you feel like you have to work for success. If you have uh, racial attitudes, um, that's going to impact the way you interact with the world. If you're po strongly politically minded and you have a preference for a certain decision-making style or a certain leadership style, that's going to impact how you interact with the world. Certainly, Senge says that people walking around with mental models aren't necessarily all going to be as efficient and effective and as prepared for change as each other. So the principal mental models describes the need for each individual within an organization to evaluate their mental models, to identify and understand their own attitudes and biases so that they are acutely aware and actively working to ensure that their mental models do not introduce barriers to the achievement of success in the business. If you do have strong political leanings, it's important that you know that about yourself and that you are actively prepared to work with people who might disagree with you. It's necessary for people in a learning organization to understand their own motivations and engage their active mind to overcoming any resistance to working with and around people who might not share their own mental models. In times of change, it's really important that people have scrutinized and determined that they are capable of working with and around people who disagree with them, especially so that they are able to be on board and work in a business environment when changes that they don't necessarily agree with have been proposed. If every employee has evaluated their mental models and is prepared to engage in a program that does not necessarily make sense to them, or they think is a bit ridiculous, then you are working in an environment where you have eliminated employee resistance as a restraining force. Here's an example of someone whose mental models uh, were very well under control. A bloke called Jeremy Fleming ran a company or runs a company called Stage Kings, who uh, in New South Wales were the absolute kings of um, scaffolding and stage building. Um, shows like Ninja Warrior, Stage Kings are the ones who did the framing of that sort of playground set, I guess, uh, and doing staging for things like the Commonwealth Games and the Royal Shakespeare Company, um, or whoever it is coming to Australia to do massive performances. Stage Kings were all about it. And certainly, if you want to talk about things that occurred in the uh, theatre industry that caused problems, shutting down <laughs> theatres as a result of the coronavirus... Uh, was significantly damaging for companies like this. Well, if you know how you think and you know that you need to be prepared for change, you need to be able to see opportunities wherever they come, even you need to be very flexible in your thinking. Well, these guys were very, very quick to see that if people are working from home, uh, there might be a lot of people who don't necessarily have a good office space in their home. They started using their CNC machines to build portable office furniture. Uh, flat-packed office furniture they could sell pretty cheaply to people and they managed to keep their business going through the COVID lockdowns with this uh, absolute pivot to something completely new. There might have been people in this business, scaffolders, um, fabricators, who if they had not been very, very prepared to accept left-wing, out-of-the-wild ideas, might have resisted this sort of change. Um, being the sort of person who normally works in high-rigged, scaffolding environments you might have thought that being told to now man a cnc machine while you make desks might be beneath you or it might be not not in my job description no thanks uh that would have been a real problem for stage kings instead the people involved in this decision were able to take advantage of this opportunity and implement it very quickly and keep their business alive the next of the principles is shared vision 
if everybody believes that there is a need for change, if everybody believes that the goals of the business are the same, if everybody can see that there is something to work towards and they're all working towards the same thing, they can be much more productive than if they have very disparate views. We can look at protests and social justice movements as an example of how effective a shared vision is. It might be that everybody in a crowd for a protest of a social justice issue might disagree on 99% of things. But when they come together to support a single agenda, when they come together because they believe that Black Lives Matter or the environment needs protecting, they can be a significant disrupting and effective force for change in society. Certainly within a business, if the people involved in that business within the internal environment are all pushing in the same direction, if they're all capable of seeing uh, that there is a need for change in some specific area, they're much, much more likely to push that change through and achieve success in that way because they believe in the mission that they are seeking to accomplish. And finally, we have team learning. If personal mastery is about being the best you can be individually, team learning is about understanding that teams are more effective than individuals. And understanding, just as personal mastery describes, a need to constantly improve the individual, team learning talks about needing to constantly improve how you work as a team. Sports teams are the absolute pinnacle of this. They train together, they train as individuals, but they specifically train together to improve their functioning as a unit rather than just a group of individuals. If you can do this in your business, if you can have your employees understand that their work together will yield more success than their work individually and have them commit to being part of the team, have the team understand that seeking to be a better team constantly is going to yield success for each of the individuals involved, they will be more productive, more efficient, more capable of reacting to and taking advantage of change opportunities when they're presented. Senge also said, one of the most important things about a learning organization is that the management are equipped to maintain and um, to foster a learning organizational culture. They said that managers who are disciplinary or controlling are almost useless. Uh, Senge said that people who want their employees to do as they're told are going to be a real problem for a learning organization. Senge says instead that managers need to be designers. They need to be people who can design a purpose, a shared vision, uh, and uh, ensure that there is a very clear goal for people to work towards. That managers need to be stewards. They need to be able to look after and foster the vision. They need to be able to ensure that people are capable of engaging with the vision. They need to make the environment one in which the vision uh, is able to be understood and worked towards and that the managers need to be teachers being able to make sure that learning and continual improvement both um, team mastery and individual mastery are being worked towards constantly implement plenty of training make a safe environment where people can try new things and make mistakes if your managers are wholly supportive wholly capable of creating and communicating a vision you will see the principles of the learning organization come to life in a business. Now, if you ever have to evaluate a learning organization, perhaps a criticism, a perhaps a valid criticism of the learning organization model would be that the time taken to establish each of these principles is time taken away from productivity. Time spent on personal mastery is not necessarily time spent doing your job. However, that criticism falls flat when we consider that the advantages for a business that maintains uh, the principles and becomes a learning organization far outweigh any potential disadvantages. A learning organization is always ready for change, which means a learning organization is capable of developing and implementing a competitive advantage at any time. A learning organization is absolutely capable of reacting away from any negative environmental forces that would have a negative impact on the business. 
A learning organization, if it's capable of establishing competitive advantages in all manner of areas, is likely to be more productive, more profitable, more appealing, more successful than any of the competition that they're up against. In summary for this key knowledge point, Peter Senge described a model for businesses that are best equipped to manage change. And he called them learning organizations. He said there are five principles for a learning organization. Those are systems thinking, personal mastery, mental models, shared vision, and team learning. And he said, absolutely, I'll try and get out of your way, (laughs) that the key to being a learning organization is being able to demonstrate all five of those principles at any one time. He also said, though it doesn't say here, that managers have a fundamental responsibility for maintaining a learning organization, but they can't do that by being controlling or bossy. They need to be stewards. They need to be teachers. They need to foster an environment which people are prepared to take risks and to learn. They need to make sure that they have designed, developed, and communicated a vision and then created an environment which people can wholly commit themselves to believing in that vision. That's all for today. See you next time.